chemistry when you're acting with other people? Is it real? Like, do you believe that chemistry is something you can't fake? Or do you think you can develop chemistry over time? Or do you feel like it's an ephemeral thing and you either have it with somebody or you don't? And if you do, what makes somebody have chemistry with someone else on screen Gosh. or on stage? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the answer to that. All I know is it's like, anything it's like any relationship it's like why do friends become friends I don't know I just think it's it's just there or not I think it's just it's innate and in the connection I don't know if it's an energetic thing uh, that happens because of the energy around us I don't, we have the same people have similar sense of humor so that when you communicate you just pick up on the rhythms I don't mm. know what it is um, I don't know but I felt it with us yeah I did too and especially there's a scene um, in Soleil's dressing room at the, <laughs> at the very beginning of the pilot and it's it's kind of like you get the feeling this is like not the first time that this kind of a conversation of this nature has happened um, but obviously this time it's really crucial because of the situation that the show is in the danger that the show is in of getting canceled but I, that, that was a, a fairly large scene in that show of just you and I, mm -hmm. and I just had so much fun. I, I could have I could have gone and done that again and again and again. Oh my God, it yeah. was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, if I, if I could work with somebody all the time with this kind of like, I think great comedy is like a team volleyball game. Mm -hmm. Except that, like, the goal is not to have anyone spike a ball and score a, <laughs> score a point. It's like keep the ball in the air, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. keep the energy. Everyone's got the ball and they're keeping, you know, tossing the ball in the air. And and I think a great like ensemble is no one drops the ball. Right. And I just and 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 I felt that with you in that scene. I just felt like the ball was just batting back and forth, and it was just it yeah. was so much fun. It's not so much about making a funny, you know, making people laugh. It's just a sense of knowing how to play comedy, mm. like having a sense of timing, mm -hmm. which is super important. Because to me, listen. If you close your eyes and listen to a comedic scene or a skit mm -hmm. or a bit, you know, or um, or a sitcom or something like that. To me, it's like listening to music. Mm -hmm. It has a musicality to it and a rhythm to it. And if it's if it's good and if it if it and if it, it's and if it does its job, right? Just like in a piece of music, you know, you're gonna crescendo at a certain point and all that, it's gonna hit all those all, like where the writer wanted that joke, it's going to land. Right. And if you cast people who don't innately play that music, then you're going to have a really difficult time scoring that piece in performance right. and getting those orchestrations right. Right. But if you cast a good group of people that just innately know how to play that style mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then it just flows and that's what I think what ended up happening with us what's it like to play the straight man or woman or person you know because there's the clown which obviously was me <laughs> in the show and then um and then there's always like this this the straighter in the pair right and Pat is definitely I mean she's the only sane person yeah working on that show heart centered living yeah and um she's kind of the mother you know the motherboard <laughs> you know right. she's she's steering everybody and trying to to, to to contain the chaos well i think it's what you said i mean she is a note in there you know so she is included in all of the notes so it's like you know when you play the straight person you're still in that flow of rhythm and it's like if you if you slam the ball or lob the ball whether you're you know being Jerry Lewis or, or Dean Martin you mm -hmm. still have to know when to you know so in a way it is it did feel funny mm -hmm. like even though I was the straight straight woman um, there's something well first of all like everybody says you know this, again this is not earth-shattering information but you know it's just tell the story mm -hmm. 
when people first meet me, I think people, I, I seem very, you know, smart and serious and no nonsense. And I'm just like <laughs> the <laughs> biggest goofball. You are a big and, goofball. And I do, and I do, and I like, I'm one of those people who has a Gracie Allen side door. I, I miss beats, you know, like mm. I'm always tripping, you know. <laughs> and um, so I think that also kind of innately gives me a sense of getting into the play with it. Well, you did it brilliantly. Oh, I, well, there's, I have a you. favorite moment. And one of my favorite moments is uh, in the scene that I was telling you guys about earlier in, in the dressing room. And um, we're talking about, uh, Soleil is talking about about uh, these Rainforest Crunch Bars <laughs> that she bought for charity, you know, she wanted to give to the Rainforest. And so she bought all, this whole case of Rainforest Crunch Bars. and. And she's worried that she looks fat, which every actress, I don't know one actress that doesn't ever think that at some point, right? You need to freshen it up. What does that mean? Inject some pizzazz. I don't have pizzazz. It's not you. I just think that the show needs more of an edge to compete in today's market. It's because I'm fat. What? Stupid charities. I should have never bought two cases of Rainforest Crunch Bars. You didn't have to eat them all. Pat. There are starving children in the rainforest that do not have rainforest crunch bars. That was one of my favorite lines because it's so ridiculous. And I just love being ridiculous and saying ridiculously stupid things. And having to play that moment with you and having to keep such a straight face and be dead serious about this is an issue. Like there are kids in the rainforest that don't have rainforest <laughs> crunch bars. That was just such a fun beat to play. It was. But it was challenging for me to, to, to play that so straight and right. not crack on it every time. But then when I got the script, I was like, oh my God, this is so tight. I knew, ex I could feel it, I could hear the notes. Mm -hmm. So that's another kind of luxury. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's hard to write something good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times when you're an actor, you're making things better. And here, it's like you just get to ride mm -hmm. the script. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. you didn't have to like, okay, well, what if we can twist this and that'll be better. And so that right. really made it, um, it was, that was part of what was so lovely about it. So it was a good experience. Oh, right? my God. <laughs>